Hello everyone. Welcome to Mechanical Software Education channel. In this video, we are going to learn about the stress analysis of cantilever beam with a gradually varying load by using ANSYS. Look at this drawing. It is a cantilever beam. The length of the beam is given as 1.5 meter. The load acting in this beam is gradually varying load starts from 7 kN per meter to 0. The unit for this uh, drawing is given in the terms of meter. So normally we just convert your uh, units from meter to millimeters. Okay. So the entire length of this uh, beam is 1.5 meter and we can convert it from meter to millimeter it is 1500 millimeters and the load which is given as maximum load as 7 kilo newton per meter and it just convert to millimeter that is 7 newton per millimeter and now the cross section of this beam is I section so you can see this the width of the I section W1 W2 and W3 is given so W1 is the a flange width in the top and W2 is in the bottom flange width and W3 is the entire height of the beam so you can add this right hand side dimension 20 plus 80 plus 20 that is 120 mm that is the height of the beam and here comes the thickness so the flange thickness is given as 20 here and here also it is 20 and this 10 is nothing but your web thickness it is the name called is web and the thickness of this web is 10 mm. So the extra part is the Young's modulus value and the Poisson's ratio is given and with the help of these parameters we can draw the cantilever beam with the help of ANSYS. Let me move on to ANSYS. So in this ANSYS you can start with the preferences so it is a structural problem select structural and go to preprocessor element type add edit or delete to your element go to add go to beam element in previous two videos we just selected two node 188 in this video or in this problem we are going to select three node 189 it is a quadratic three node beam element and uh, each and every node having its own displacement and uh, here each and every node having six degrees of freedom so uh, three in translation that is x y z direction and uh, again three direction that is x y z in rotation so translation and rotations so both the things are happens here with the uh, six direction that is x y z so six degrees of freedom should be available in each node so select this three node 189 so you okay and close here go to material properties material models go to structural linear elastic isotropic give 2e5 that is 2 into the power of 5 so your Young's modulus value is 0 0.33 give ok and close here and go to section in this beam section you can uh, you must draw an I section so go to the subtype select I section here and in this part you can see here so W1 is the base and uh, W1 the dimension is 60 and W2 it's a top flange and the uh, flange width it is 100 and W3 is the entire height of the beam so entire height is 120 and you can see the thickness T1 is the base thickness that is 20 flange thickness and the T2 is also the same dimension that is 20 and T3 shows that it is a web thickness it is 10 so these are all the given data uh, which gave in the problem so go to preview and you can check your I beam section give ok and now you are going to create your model go to create go to key points inactive coordinate system start with the first node oh sorry first key point start with the 0 comma 0 it is an origin the second value so what is the entire length of your beam is 1.5 meter so it is 1500 millimeter so 1500 should be given so there should not be any uh, intermediate uh, uh, nodes or even key points should be there so you can use key point 1 and key point 2 alone 
so I give OK and go to lines and straight line join first key point and second key point give OK and go to meshing go to size control manual size go to lines all lines so give the entire division says 100 so the line is divided into 100 equal divisions ok now go to mesh and uh, select line pick all the entire line was meshed ok now you are going to give the boundary conditions so it is a static problem and uh, you are must define the load go to apply structural and go to displacement on key points so select the first key point and uh, it is a cantilever beam so you must arrest all degrees of freedom here so give ok here and now it is an uniformly distributed load sorry not a uniformly di distributed load it is a uniformly varying load if you are going to give uniformly distributed load means you can directly go to this pressure and on beams and you can uh, pick all the beams pick all the beams and you can select two here and uh, if you give value in i node means the entire uh, load should be equally distributed but in this problem we are going to use this uniformly varying load or it is a gradually varying load starting from 7 kN per meter to 0 kN per meter so it is the value it is just decreasing from the top to bottom 7 to 0 so we need to uh, give or we need to write some codes for uh, uh, giving this gradually varying load so for applying this uh, uh, gradually varying load we have uh, two methods so one is through commands and another one is by equal triangular method so in this pro in this problem we are going to implement this uh, command method for uh, giving the same commands for uh, EVL that is uniformly varying load so here you can see that we already uh, divided the entire line into 100 equal divisions so this K stands for the key point or even uh, a key option number and this number shows that 1 to 100 so the division from started from 1 and ended up to 100 so this is the element division and this one stands for it is shown in the X direction so that uh, division should be in the X direction so so the value is 1 and now the second line shows that it is a uh, shear force beam shear force beam and uh, K shows that it is a key point and number 2 shows that the load should be acting in the downward direction okay it is in Y direction downward direction so we must apply the pressure and uh, 7 stands for your maximum load so you can see here the maximum load is 7 kilo Newton per meter and we just converted into 7 Newton per millimeter so use 7 here and uh, the minus sign shows that the load which happens from or it should be started from left hand side to right hand side so if the load is gradually increased from left hand side to uh, right hand side it should be 0 plus you must use the sign for incremental value or decremental value okay so so k minus 1 k is the uh, uh, value that is a key point value we must use uh, 1 to 100 we can use this 1 to 100 that is the variation between this element numbers okay so 7 is the maximum value uh, divided by your total element number that is 100 okay so come on the second part is 7 is your maximum value minus k is your key point value into 7 this 7 stands for your maximum uh, load divided by how much uh, deviation is there for your element number it stands from 1 to 100 so the division is 100 if you divided your entire beam as 1 to 10 means so the value should be equal to 10 so you can change here as 10 and change it as 10 and 10 in this problem we divided the entire line into 100 equal divisions that's why we just use 100 here and also here and also here okay so now uh, this is the end of the program we can this is a cyclic program that's why here do should be there and it should be connected to this first line so you can copy this 
command and you can paste it in the command prompt and give enter the entire load should be applied on the beam so it should be look like a uniformly distributed load so go to plot and go to multi plots you can see that the load is varying from the top left corner to bottom right corner okay so it is a easier way to implement your udl with the help of uh, the divisions of your elements okay so now after completing this you can now solve your problem go to ok and just wait the solution is done here and now go and check with your post processor results plot results check with your deform shape first and then contour plot go to nodal solution go to degrees of freedom solution displacement vector sum and that's the value for your i section 2.95821 millimeters now change the shape from a two dimensional into three dimensional okay now you can see here it is an i section okay now you can check with your uh, shear force drawing and bending moment drawing with the help of uh, uh, element table go to element table define table here and go to add your values by sequence number your miscellaneous number should be added here three six and the next one is 16 sorry I typed 1 here 16 and apply and the last one is 19 give ok if I uh, selected the extra number means you can select this one and go to delete here so this is the sequence number 3 is to 16 and 6 is to 19 3 is to 16 is for uh, bending moment and 6 is to 19 sequence is for shear force go to close here and go to plot results and go to counter plot and select this line element result you can give this sequence number 3 is to 16 and you can check your value here so go to front view you can easily check your value so 3 is to 16 I already told you that it is a bending moment so the curve you can see here is a parabolic curve okay now you can check with your next uh, sequence number 6 is to 19 it is a shear force drawing so this shear force drawing is look like a almost look like a straight line okay so this is the uh, sorry it is not look like a straight line it is uh, almost look like a parabolic curve okay now uh, you are bending moment drawing actually the bending moment drawing it should be of a cubic curve it should be cubic curve and uh, this shear force drawing it should be of parabolic curve it is a uh, parabolic in shape and you can check with this 3 is to 16 sequence for uh, bending moment you can check here it is a cubic curve it is a cubic curve and uh, the shear force drawing it should be of a parabolic curve okay so this is the division for uh, uniformly varying load and uh, if you want to check your results in a result viewer you can go to this result viewer you can select your degrees of freedom control plot you can check your results here okay now uh, if you want to animate your results in a deformed results here you can animate with the help of uh, uh, translation in the x direction you can see the animation in x directions so how the deformation happens you can check with this animation part okay now close this part and uh, if you want to uh, take printouts in easier way go to style and you must change your color from black to white and now you just capture your image and save your image or in the your uh, results in bitmap file okay it should be in a bitmap file okay now okay guys thank you very much if you really enjoyed this video you can uh, uh, subscribe and uh, press like and comment thank you very much thank you